Hi, Noah here with Advice from a Young Tradesman TV, and this video is going to be a good overview of how I am restoring this 200-year-old grand staircase, and that's going to include painting over wallpaper. How do you decide what can stay, what do you have to take off, how do you make it stable enough to paint, as well as plaster repair. What do you do with big holes like this with lath exposed, and also what do you do if those whole sheets of plaster kind of delaminated from the lath, but you have to maintain it and fix it. So we're going to go over all that. This is going to be a big video. This is a big stairwell and a big job. Um, but first, I want to thank the PCA, the Painting Contractors Association, for underwriting content like this. They believe in empowering contractors and educating contractors, and part of that mission is through the work of other contractors like this. So. Thank you to the PCA for making this possible, and if you want to know more about them, all of their information is in the notes. So without further ado, I'm going to show you the two different things that I'm prepping. You know, two big phases here, stabilize the wallpaper, stabilize the plaster, and I will show you each individually as well as the rest of this whole setup. Okay, I uh, just want to talk about a little bit of prep and uh, masking and protective stuff that I did before I started demo. So. Easy one, cover your radiators. Like You don't want to have to clean all of that out of that. So cover that. And then you're also probably seeing the floor covering. This is grip right roofing underlayment. It is water impervious. It is tough. You can't mess it up. And the only other thing to know about this is how I'm tacking it to the floor. This is the 3M pink delicate surface. It doesn't leave a residue when you pull it. it can go 60 days. That always hits the bare wood first, and then the really tough, burly 3M green rough surface ties everything together. So you'll see pink on the floor, or connecting right to the floor, and green tying everything together. And what that's gonna do is make everything really easy to sweep and clean. I like things to be really easily cleanable and this is also protecting from spills, mud, paint, whatever. But now that we're upstairs, I already prepped all this today. Not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. There was only one big spot that just fell apart. A couple spots like this. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna deal with this. Loose lath, that's not terribly well adhered. See that flex? And then another thing to show, this wall, that wall was just completely falling apart. So the general contracting crew on this job demoed that, drywalled it, the rest is getting preserved though. So starting with wallpaper, I will show you how I'm building this back up. As you can see, I'm using a nice wide and sharp putty knife. This is one I exclusively use for demolition because it is so good at just getting under uh, really anything, wallpaper, flaking paint, anything that is unstable, it's getting that. Um, and you can see I also carry a few smaller ones for areas like that. And we are really just going for stuff that's going to come up with a nice sharp blade being tested over it from a bunch of different angles. And as you can see, sometimes I'm getting down to a stable wallpaper layer below. And sometimes I am getting to raw plaster there, which is why I'm wearing all that personal protective equipment. That raw plaster dust is no good to get on your skin, clothes, eyes, respiratory system, whatnot. So I fully suit up for that step because it's just cleaner. You'll notice we are leaving all of this. And that is because just like in the last step, I had that sharp putty knife every which way and if it doesn't come up with that uh it's not coming up and i'm going right over it and that's totally fine it can look like a mess like that like this i'm gonna go over it and paint it and it's okay there are a lot of methods of removing wallpaper if i am going over modern normal wallpaper over you know a well prepped substrate i will use some moisture usually just some warm water uh sponged in for this i did not want to get into that because of the questionable status of the plaster below i was only dry scraping and we were priming and sealing in everything else that's well attached so that was the approach with the wallpaper uh, on the plaster front the big deal with plaster is anything that really just crumbles it all has to come out and you're going to take it to a stable edge the problem with this though is that you can see it is not very well laminated to this lath the keying has failed 200 years later it's fine but 
A lot of people would, you know, just start ripping that out and replacing it, but guess what? No one's ever gonna impact that. I can stabilize it, fill in those gaps, and it's gonna be totally fine. So the next step is stabilizing any loose plaster like that and getting those edges secured so I can start to fill in the middle and compound it. All right, so you are going to see me drill a bunch of holes in places where I know I'm going to hit left. That's an important step and keep that in mind for another scene in a, in a minute. I'm also vacuuming out any plaster dust that I generate by drilling there and the reason for that's going to become clear the next step as well. I drill one hole, there's no lath behind it, I make an X, remember that for later. That's a no-go for screwing. Okay, so now I have a general construction adhesive that is PL Ultra or something like that, and I am basically getting as much as I can in between the back of the plaster layer and the lath. I want to fill up that space with as much of this as humanly possible because now I am putting washers on there. Now you will recognize these washers as the kind that are generally countersunk into the plaster layer. This plaster is a little too thin and a little too old to do that. It kind of crumbles. I don't really want them proud of the surface because that's just way too much skimming. So what I chose to do is have them just be used really to create a lot of pressure overnight on that construction adhesive and I'm going to remove them the next day. You'll also notice I'm using some some of that grip right underlayment as kind of another washer and that is just so that PL that squirts out doesn't bond the metal to the surface and make it harder to remove. As you can see, super solid. Super super solid there. That thing is really glued down to the wall. And here is the next day. I am removing all of the washers now. I did leave a few screws countersunk in at various spots just so there is something mechanical still tying tying in there and it's not all adhesive, but they were not uh, uh, they were not washered. And I, now I'm removing all of the little uh, grip right washers. <laughs> Look at that, super, super solid. That is totally glued back down to the lath and now we have a stable edge that I can start to compound to. And I promise I'd come back to, to this little clip. I was able to, to stabilize the lath to the back of the plaster and refix that. So that's good too. And last thing, you just want to get any remaining PL adhesive out of there just because it, it's going to clog up sandpaper, which is the next step. So what you saw right there is the next step. So all of the anchors have been pulled, the proud adhesive has been scraped off, and as much wallpaper as needs to come off is off. So the next step, the final step in prep before we do our first coat of primer is what you saw, a quick sanding. Um, we just want to flatten everything out. It serves as a cleaning step too. So it flattens, it cleans, and it just makes the prime step go a little bit smoother and gives us a little bit of a leg up once we start the skim coating, which is after priming. So we'll check in before priming. Okay, and that wraps up part one. I chose to break this video up or else it was going to be really, really long. That was the prep, the sanding, the stabilization, and the next video, which a link will pop up somewhere, is going to be the priming and sealing everything up and getting the finishing touches put on it. So uh, yeah, continue on to see how I wrap up this beautiful staircase.